Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in the previous episode, Jebediah Kerman went off to the moon and decided to make a side trip to Minmus. Now while this was a very heroic thing to do and brought back m great amounts of science, um, Mission Control isn't too happy with him because it reduced the amount of time we have for, for more exploration before the first asteroid comes in. So, uh, they've decided the first thing to do is to perhaps break up some of the possible, I don't know, uh, overconfidence among the top three and uh, get, some, get some other potential Kerbinauts in to, uh, well, to, to uh, keep them on their toes, if you will, before they get a little bit too out of hand. So, uh, we'll get James, because that's easy enough. Uh, Mac and Kerman. Okay, uh, actually, uh, a lot of stupidity is not a good idea. Um, the mission control is a little bit worried about such things. Ed Ball, very courageous, uh, minimal stupidity. Mitt Gun, okay. Um, I don't think I can even pronounce that properly, if, if there is a proper pronunciation of that. I guess Harbury would be good. Uh, let's get Lubas too. Heck, uh, we could always use more Kerbinauts. And the reason we can use a lot of Kerbinauts was, well, let, let, let's go to the tracking station to see the situation. We're currently tracking three asteroids, but there are a lot coming in. The one that we're mostly concerned with right now is this one. And that's because it's got to collide with us. Uh, it's Class C, which means it won't do catastrophic damage, but it'll still be somewhat annoying, especially if it lands directly on the KSC. Now, we can see its path, I think, if we have it highlighted, but we focus on Kerbin, is that how it works? I forget how it works. Uh, so we focus on Kerbin. Uh, no. I know there's a way to look at it. I've... I've uh, I've done a little bit of practice in Sandbox, just so I don't completely do something stupid here, but um, but yeah, I think uh, it'll be a little bit of a... I'll have to check that out, how to do that. Anyway, but there are basically two ways to intercept an asteroid. It's either in free space here, or it's uh, in the Kerbin system, when it actually enters the Kerbin system, uh, which it will do in seven days. Now we have to be a little bit prepared for that, and the scientists, what they want to do is at least see if we can intercept it. Obviously we don't have anything to grab onto it yet, hint hint, but but we do want to be able to make an inter intercept, and we'll do that in Kerbin space. So seven days from now we have to be prepared for that. That means within seven days we really want to milk the moon out of any science it might have, and to do that we're going to send more than one mission. We're going to send an armada over there. So instead of just sending one mission at a time, today we plan to launch a number of different missions with our new Kerbinauts. So let's go to VAB and see what we can do. So this is the Mooner 1 that worked so well for Jeb. It got him all the way over to, uh, to Minmus, so it's got plenty of fuel. Now what we need to do is, I was reminded by the way that uh, we can move science from uh, from these uh, containers into the main pod so we don't have to return these containers. Um, really all that saves is the weight of these two parachutes though. Um, so I'll have to think about that. And Well anyway uh, what we want to do is make a lander and so maybe maybe this it will be well we will have to carry it down to the surface of, uh, of the moon if we want to do this science that complicates things for a bit, uh, so maybe we shouldn't do this science. Or maybe I shouldn't be so worried about the shape of things. Um, let's see. Because I, I, I do want to make our lander as tight as possible. So uh, l let me just dump the science junior for now and replace it with this. And when I say as tight as possible, ooh, this is a pretty big engine, isn't it? Hmm. Well, let's, let's say we are using that in another stage here. That's heavy, though. I think this calls for the research into new technologies. Let's go to the research center. 
We had saved up some science so that I could do this, and I think I should. Oh, probe parts too. That's a good thing. Oh, uh, do we have any ladders? Oh, we have these mobility enhancers. I guess that'll do for now. We're, we're going to the moon, so they can hop up anyway. Um, and we've got thermometers, don't forget that. But I think I want these uh, new uh, overpowered liquid fuel engines, these things that uh, now have four times their old power. That's quite, uh, quite a thing, quite a thing. Except, of course, they have the low ISP, but, uh, you know, yes, ants. Um, yeah, so it looks like this is about the size that I'm looking for. So let's research that. And we don't have enough for ladders, but I guess we do have enough for probe parts and reaction wheels. And reaction wheel would be, well, it really doesn't uh, matter while we have the pod because the main pod has plenty of torque in. Uh, but, but yeah, let's, let's research it. Just to move things along. I don't actually know where the claw is in terms of the tech tree. So we do have to sort of blitz the thing so I can eventually find out where that might be. I don't see it yet. Okay, so uh, with this new technology and smaller engines, let's go back to the VAB. Loading up Mooner 1 again. And... Yeah, let's... Let me get my calculator out too, because we're going to need to know the delta V of these stages. And... Yeah. Okay, so let's take this off, and let's say we put a stage of this, and that's that's a one-ton tank, and this is about a one-ton pod, uh, close enough, and we, we let's dump these parachutes for now. So let's say it's like this. Um, don't like the battery there. Let's, let's just say this. That's about two tons. Okay, and two tons, minimum takeoff. Uh, well, actually, these will be fine. I think it's only five units of thrust that we really need. But do we want these, or should we just go overpowered with it? Tiny engines, very useful. They have a great thrust. Uh, their own thrust to weight ratio is very good. Gotta make these decisions quickly. Um, well, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's get let's get some lander legs on this thing. Ooh, hmm. Hmm. Let's get call this two point five tons. I mean, and that's one ton of fuel there. So, I'm going to do the calculation here. And the best ISP we get from these is 300, I think. 1,500 delta V. Hmm. That's enough to land, but not to... I mean, that's enough to take off and return to Kerbin, but I'm not confident that it's enough to land as well as doing everything else. So, maybe we should sneak in another tank. We've got the sort of base for it here. If we try and put a reaction wheel, it'll totally... Uh, this is point mass point 0.3, that would be horrible. Let me add this uh, new tank in and try it out. Oh. Oh, well, uh, syntax error. Okay. Stop that, stop that. And... 2,000. Okay, I think uh, getting down and up uh, on 2,000 is very doable. Uh, the question is whether the mass of this is what I think it is. Let's see. So let me tally up the masses here. 1.125 plus point. This is the first time I'm building uh, something legit here. I just uh, slapped on stuff in previous episodes because I knew I was doing, but uh, getting the lander right is very, very important. 
Uh, otherwise, we might not be able to get back home. Uh, oh, uh, I've only got one, uh, one parachute. Uh, that one parachute actually should be able to carry all this. I think. Well, let's let's tally everything up and see if that's true. Plus point one. Yeah, it's three tons. This whole thing, and then if you subtract out the the fuel, it's uh, one point five tons. Uh, pretty much exactly, and uh, pretty much exactly two thousand delta V. That's about eight hundred for landing, eight hundred for takeoff, and four hundred for transit. So that's what I'm planning on. Uh, for uh, for the return. Uh, now we've tested this thing's empty mass is what? 0.5-ish. Oh, so one parachute might not be enough. Hmm. I don't want to overdo it though. Well, let's get some batteries on first. Uh... Actually, let's just just go for solar panels. Let's get those on. One battery wouldn't hurt. Maybe we should focus on doing thermometer stuff. We haven't done any. Yeah, I think uh, thermometers are a thing. So let's get some thermometers on here. I don't know about this. Maybe... No, I think it's 12 around for these. Let's see. And let me alt click that and do. Oh, that looks better. Okay. I think these little rockets are probably overkill, but but they look fine. So that's that's the important thing. Um Uh, well, let's keep the battery situation balanced. Let's get two batteries. So a shame not carrying a goo container, though. I guess we could get the radial parachutes. Oh, they're so heavy, though. Well, actually, I wanted to. Move these here and get the goo containers on. Oh, could be worse. But yeah, so this will return this whole thing back to Kerbin, which is fair enough. I mean, we could add the coupler here and have him transfer the stuff in. Is that worth it though? It looked better. Uh, how much does the decoupler weigh? 0.05. I guess that's that's uh, better than. Yeah. Let, let's let's just have him return with the pod and try and get the stuff out of the goo containers. How much do the goo containers weigh? 0.3 together, I think. Yeah. Okay, so what happens to our delta V if we add 0.3 to the mass? Drops it to 1,780. Well, I'll have to make a better landing than I normally do. But uh, maybe I can uh, get some landing help from this stage. now. How's our... Oh, it should be fine, I think. All we have to do is... These are at 100. I think... I think we're okay, but maybe we should get rid of this tank uh, or reduce its size. Yeah, I don't think we'll need this much fuel. If we're just gonna make a moon landing and return, I think this will be it. Let's get some variants of this, actually. But since we're going to send more than one mission, we might as well send different types, right? So, Moon or two, save. Let's launch this one first and then see what we've got. Yeah. 
Uh, let's let's get one of the newbies. Um, I think we need somebody courageous. Uh, Ed Ball. Ed Ball it is. Ed Ball gets to go and make the first moon landing, actually, uh, potentially. So, uh oh, why do I have uh, I have too many decoupler things here? Let's not do that. Okay, let's go out to launch pad. All right, so here we are, SAS on, throttle up, and so we're gonna get this into orbit, and then we'll start preparing the next mission. All right, so uh, off we go. So we're not gonna do the lunar transfer transfers yet. Well, I guess we could get him on his way. Yeah, I guess we could get him on his way. Ed Ball looks a little bit worried, but perhaps that just shows that he's somewhat intelligent about this whole thing. I don't know. Of course, I don't think he had great courage stats, so I guess that's there. You know what? Uh, I, sh I should really see whether we could do a direct transfer here. Uh, not quite. But maybe as the world rotates, uh, one of ours could be a direct transfer. I guess I should mention that I do play with a control stick and I do tend to over adjust. That's, that'll become apparent once we uh, do a landing. But So I'm not playing with, uh, I'm not uh, adjusting the rocket position with keyboard. I do that with the joystick. And in fact, uh, if I do use the keyboard, you'll be able to hear it. So, you will know when I do such things. So time to apoapsis. Three seconds should be enough to do this, and it's increasing. That's fine. Let's get a little bit more height to that apoapsis, though we don't need too much height. Uh, Overf effect means that we can we can limit that somewhat. Let's try and get our apoapsis in the right position so that I can burn to the moon at least from there. Let's cut it there. And let's try to make a. Uh, it'll descend a little bit because we're still in the atmosphere. There we go. That'll do. And what's our periapsis on that? We'll be going down. On uh, for a burn, we'll be actually on the downward leg and uh, <laughs> threatening to re-enter the atmosphere. But we will, we will not actually re-enter the atmosphere. We just need to make sure we do our burn on time. And then Ed Ball will be on his way. Let's get some temperature readings. I guess. We really should have done some on the on the way up. Uh, come on, you. And yep, while in space near Kerbin, good. We'll have to wait until we get high over Kerbin before we do anything else. And we'll be busy with some of the other missions, but we should still be able to catch a high over Kerbin. So yeah, we're gonna try and milk the moon for as much science as we can. <coughs> And then, once we've got plenty of science, we'll be able to hopefully get to... I don't know where the claw is, but I hope we get to it. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to have to try a rendezvous with that asteroid. We've uh, been through nine days in-game already. Okay, I think we should start burning. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, uh, pretty much on time. Uh, let's see where we are at. Let's, uh, I've throttled down, let's dump this stage, and let's see what our situation is. Okay, just a little bit more burning. And this is a very traditional sort of 
free return thing. I, I hope nobody's going to contradict me on that. I, I do believe this is a legit free return trajectory here. And... Yeah. Uh, a little bit higher will do. I think, uh, yeah, that makes this one lower. Actually, this is uh, pretty much perfect as far as the free return would be. Uh, you go... Uh, we could... Uh, of course, we're actually going to land, but otherwise we... If we had to abort, we would just uh, continue on this path to abort into Kerbin's atmosphere. Alright, so uh, Ebal Kerman is on his way, but we need to send other Kerbals on their way as well. So let's go back to the VAB. Now obviously one of the reasons I think this is not a bad idea is because we've got the new maneuver node system and it retains our maneuvers uh, even if we leave the vessel, and I intend to test this. So, because it retains our maneuvers, um, I can plot stuff for uh, each of these vessels and switch between them without worrying that I'm going to lose something. I think this, this worked out quite well. After all, we uh, expended the launch stage right after doing the lunar transfer. So this stage here will be used to decelerate us around the moon. And then we land and then we take off and uh, do our thing. I think that's that's as good as it gets, really. So, so yeah, I, I guess we could pack a Science Junior instead. To, uh, try and figure out how to fit one in. But it's sort of more important just to... Oh, I know what I can improve on. I don't have any... Uh, Let's get some some way for the Kerbals to uh, latch on. Yeah, because uh, when they hop, I, sometimes they have trouble hitting that thing. And I, I actually don't think we need so much battery power. When, because uh, we've got the solar panels. Though, then again, we we will be using the reaction wheel a lot on landing. So let's let's actually just top two in somewhat like this. Right. For this one I'm not going to have as many thermometers, but I will do something that I had promised to do but just forgot to do uh, with the other one, and that's have some lights. So, uh, let's have one of, one of these, uh, yeah, let's have one of these lights, but also some of the other lights. Lots of lights. Um, this is more for illuminating the body itself, though. But yeah, that that could be helpful. Let's let's just do this. Uh, they don't have much mass to them, and we've got uh, battery packs and everything. So let's say the the moon is sort of grayish. Let's see now. Um, let's turn the light on. Makes it yellowish, okay. I forget my color spectrum stuff. It's grayish. Can we get it a brownish? Yeah, that, that seems like a very good color, actually, for the moon. So we'll go with this 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.15. And yeah, I keep it off for now. Oh, I know I don't want to. Just the one. And this one is mainly to uh, make sure we can see where our vessel is. Uh, that's horrible. And and now the spotlights for the ground. sort of hard to figure out where to shove these. I guess... I guess I'll do. Yes, uh, that'll be fine. 
So we've got lights, folks. We've got lights. So that's going to be an improvement on this one. And let's actually, let's move these batteries a little bit. Let, let's move them to the opposite side. All right. This is an improved version, Mooner 3. Save, and who do we want to get to do this? James. Yes, James gets the first fully featured pod. And uh, let's launch him. Now, of course, if anything should happen on the first mission, or in any subsequent missions, we can abort, if necessary, and bring them back home. And so perhaps we can even uh, uh, preserve the free return for this one as well. So, we'll see about that. That's not quite the trajectory I expected here. I hope that's right. I guess it's not just not calculating the moon encounter with that. All right, uh, SS on, throttle is up, and go. Don't worry, we'll we'll put much more extensive lights on uh, on future missions. This is just the beginning, and uh, I'll, I'll say uh, I won't do turn on the lights just yet. So let's get into space. Okay, I think we need the lights on. This is ah, uh, look at that. Uh, it only works from certain angles because it's cutting, uh, catching the edges of the rocket. A very classic look. So, uh, judging from last time, we should probably be around here on the apoapsis instead of where we were before. Uh, we're going up too high. Let's stop that there. We do want it to encounter the moon a little bit later, but oh, scroll wheel, huh? Did not realize that. Hmm. I must use the scroll wheel. That is a good thing. But uh, hold on, we're in totally wrong place, unfortunately. We need to be a little bit more like this, right? Now, now scroll wheel. Now scroll wheel. And we don't really need to get that return perfect. I'd much rather make sure that we're on a different trajectory so that we get there later. Okay, that looks good. Looks fine to me. Okay, and so let's do this. Come on. Uh, obviously with uh, just the pods control system, it's a little bit tricky to the time warp trick where it freezes everything. When you time orb like this, of course, it puts the entire game on rails, so that's why it uh, freezes the craft like that. Okay, so let's say right, 45 seconds. Uh, okay, that's about right. Well, actually, these have gimbaling, don't they? Yeah, I think uh, just a little tiny bit of gimbal, though. Of course, that only works when they're firing. Oh, this one expended a little bit early. So that's what our craft looks in the dark. Oop, overdoing it. Not 
Let's check this thing. Okay. Uh, let me get rid of that maneuver node. And let's see. Okay, that's good. Fine trajectory. And so uh, while we're away from it, I think I should turn off the lights just just in case. So anyway, James Kerman is on his way as well. Yep. Uh, let's let's get one more one more up, and we'll use the same craft, so we won't uh, delay anything. Let's get one more up, and let's actually time it a little bit. Uh, so how about let's see uh, where. Where can we do a single burn to the moon? Let me time warp just a little bit. We need carbon to rotate. I guess we sort of need carbon to rotate quite a lot, don't we? I don't want them to actually get to their moon encounter, that would be unfortunate. We want to do this before they get to the moon encounter. Let's see, the moon is like right there. See, the right timing is uh, right when the moon is rising above the horizon. So... I think we can do it from here. All right, let's quickly launch in our mission. Let's go to the VAB. And Mooner 4 will be conducted by... Uh, hmm. Harbury Kerman. Don't need too much courage when we've got two other people going before you, right? So, yeah, Harbury Kerman, let's go. All right, so in this massive attempt to get science from the moon, this is our final launch for this set of missions. And on this launch, we'll be aiming straight for the moon. So let's uh, set that as target. Yeah, should be able to do it. Harbury's still scared. Honestly, how many launches do we have to have before you go? thinking about plotting it, but I don't think it's necessary. Oh, let's let's get a thermometer reading here while we're at it. Uh, let's see. Oh, did we clear all the thermometer? No, we must have kept some here. Uh, come on. Yeah. Okay, keep that data. Have we done a GUI experiment in here? Let's do one. Let's just make sure. Oh, we have, okay. Really? Huh. Well, this was definitely an uh, inadvisable ascent. I guess I was too shallow. Okay. So noted. And also, I was, I'm was i deviating quite a lot from my prograde vector. I really shouldn't do that. But here we go, here we go. Oh, 
Well, I guess we can go like that. This is not a free return trajectory. This is a let's get out of here trajectory. But, um, but you know, Harbury seems quite pleased with it, so we'll go with it. After all, he's the one that is completely lacking in courage, so if he's alright with it, I think we can uh, call it a go. So, without further ado, let me switch to Mooner 2. <laughs> 